Hey guys, so for years I've been looking for the best way to clean model railroad track. There may not be a wrong way to do it, but I think I finally developed the way that works best for me. We'll try and make it as painless as possible, and hopefully once you get past some of the initial steps, there's really only two steps you need to do after that to keep things running well. See what you think. deal with dirty track. Track cleaning! Track cleaning! No me gusta! Track cleaning! 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 Okay, so you've got this black gunk on your rails. Most of us turn to either this 1950s era bright boy to scratch the hell out of our track, or wipe down the tracks with alcohol using any number of applicators. Don't use alcohol. Alcohol is great for thinning paint, drinking, and weathering rolling stock. Not necessarily in that order. But there are better ways to clean your track. Alcohol is a polar solvent, which means it attracts dirt right back to the surface you just cleaned. And that bright boy? It's leaving scratches that are great places for dirt to get trapped. Toss that bright boy and never look back. Okay, hold on just a second. We might need that bright boy one last time. If you're just starting a layout and haven't scratched your track yet with a bright boy or other abrasive, congratulations, you can skip the first two steps. But if you're like most of us, we've got to smooth out the rails first so we can finally do away with using elbow grease on our tracks once and for all. Basically, we're going to go through a process called gleaming. Gleaming is a multi-part process that's been around for years, but very unpopular because it's so involved. So we're going to compress the process down to just two steps. Normally gleaming involves a couple of passes of sandpaper wrapped around a block, then a rail mashing phase, I'll explain in a moment, and finally adding metal polish and buffing the rails until shiny. It's a ton of work, so we're going to just do two of the steps. If you're interested in the full gleaming process, there is plenty of info online and it does lead to some very shiny rails. But all the steps on a large layout with scenery pretty much killed it for me. So here's our method. Instead of sandpaper, we're going to use the Bright Boy one last time to get our current layer of dirt and grime off. Use a forward and backwards motion, never side to side. Now toss that Bright Boy for good. I picked up this 2 inch washer at my local hardware store. When I went to pay for it, the guy looked at me funny because I only wanted one and it was like 50 cents. He couldn't be bothered to ring it up and said since I touched it, it was mine. We're going to place the rounded side down and apply as much pressure as your layout and fingers will bear. This is the mashing phase where we literally grind metal on metal to smooth out those scratches that are still in your rail from the Bright Boy. It took me days to do this step to a large layout. If you have a smaller layout, it shouldn't be too bad. With the mashing step done, we've completed the setup and we're good to move on to track maintenance. I do the following two steps every couple of months, but that's because I have friends over. I also clean my locomotive wheels at the same time if I can. If your layout doesn't get run very often, or you don't let people bring trains over, you might only need to do this once a year. So here's what we're going to need. My heavy lifting is done by the CMX Clean Machine. It's an investment, but worth 150 bucks. For the price of a non-sound locomotive or a couple of freight cars, you'll save a lot of time and aggravation. As you can see, I've lost one of the caps years ago and I just use tape. Rule number one, with or without the cap, never hold it upside down above your head. Why not? It burns, burns, burns. The CMX is made for serious solvents. I'm talking about our next ingredient, acetone. Acetone, like alcohol, is a polar solvent. But it will remove dirt much better than alcohol because it dissolves organics and plastics, just to name a few. It also makes great lighter fluid. 
Rule number two, never let the CMX car sit while dripping acetone on your layout. I found this out the hard way when it destroyed one of those expensive Peco number no. 7 turnouts by melting the plastic ties so much the track was no longer engaged. I usually shove the CMX car around with a heavy dedicated locomotive. That's because the CMX car is made of heavy brass. So when it's dragging a pad over your layout, it means business. This older Walther's E8 is all weight inside the shell. Your cleaning train is going to be running over damp dirt, so your cleaning locomotive's wheels may get gummed up faster than normal, and some of that dirt may find its way into the locomotive, shortening your locomotive's life. So while a heavy scale train's Jeevo might be tempting to use and more fun to watch going around the layout, I would use something more expendable. I usually fill up the CMX's reservoir with acetone about three quarters full. Then I check the drip rate to make sure it's about a drop or two per second. You don't want to let the pad get too dry because then your CMX car will just be spreading the leftover dirt around your track again. That means you'll need to learn about how many passes around the layout it can go before it runs out of solvent. While it's running, I usually clean the wheels of any locomotives I can. Don't forget, if you just clean track, you're missing a big source of contamination. I'll do a separate video on cleaning locomotives and rolling stock. And spoiler alert, as long as you don't have plastic wheels on your rolling stock, you shouldn't need to clean them often, if ever. Again, please don't use alcohol. I usually let the CMX car run about two to three times around the entire layout. Each time I refill the CMX, I clean the pad off with a paper towel. There's really no reason to push more dirt around. Hopefully you'll see the pad stay a bit cleaner with each pass. Now for the final step. The last thing you'll need is CRC226, which is an electrical lubricant that comes in a spray bottle. As you may recall, acetone is also a polar solvent, so we need to finish our cleaning with something that is non-polar. It not only repels dirt from sticking to your rails, it soaks any leftover dirt it comes in contact with, making the dirt electrically conductive. We'll do one to two passes around the layout by wetting a fresh CMX pad with 226. Just like the acetone pass, I usually clean the pad midway before reapplying more lubricant. If your layout only gets light use, or you want to do a fast clean before an op session, skip the acetone step and just run the CMX with 226 on the pad. Notice we're not using the drip method for this, so it would be possible to use a cheaper track cleaning car if you only plan to use 226, as long as it has a pad that can absorb the 226. It should be noted that the 226 is a lubricant and will cause your trains to lose a small amount of tractive power. However, this is negligible once the 226 dries in a few days. The good news is, if your track is recontaminated while the 226 is still wet, that dirt will become saturated with 226 and conduct electricity. Who'd have thought? Electrically conductive dirt. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you've learned something new about track cleaning. Stay tuned for more videos as I continue to build the layout. Cheers! Não me gusta.